Mr. Ra, do you admit that Darwin's tree of life is wrong? No comment. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Your Honor, these are catalogs of genes such as topiosomerase and zinc finger from both NIH and the ENCODE project. You'll find there are no examples of common ancestors to these genes, proving evolution is false. I submit these as creationist exhibits Alpha and Bravo. You snotty little creationist. You and your pretty white suits don't realize that evolution saves lives. Do you admit to saying that proteins do not have a common ancestor? You darn right I did. Your Honor, I moved to an immediate Article 38 Omaha to stop teaching the fairy tale of evolution. The atheist has rights. Sal, why are you doing this to oh. yourself, man? <laughs> why is, that, are you doing this? This? is this Sal? This is Sal. Oh, this is his pet argument. And just like... Topiosomerase. <laughs> All right, hold, hold on just a minute. Let me uh, let me make a note of that. Listen, like everybody has been trying to warn him away from this argument for like two years. We're just like Sal, this is not what like the slam dunk you think it is. Well, let, just, let's let's let, let's let's begin uh, properly. Let me just get one word. Can't help himself. <laughs> zinc finger. Yeah, I remember suffering from zinc finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What can we say about that? Daniel, no one, let me say again. I'm recording now. Yeah. What can we say about that? Uh, Dr. Daniel Stern Cardinal. Um, remind us of your, your, your jobs again. You're a geneticist. Yes. Uh, evolutionary biologist. I'm a, I'm a full-time teacher. Um, I teach everything from biochemistry and cell bio all the way up to ecology and evolution. And right now we're, you know, it's May 30th. It's the summer for me. So I am currently teaching my, one of my two evolution courses, which is really fun. I'm, I'm currently indoctrinating the youth. <laughs> well, I, I very much appreciate you uh, joining me on this. I, I, I didn't realize, apparently, you know, who this is that made this video. I oh Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I had no idea who it was when I saw it. I just thought, and I know this is really low-hanging fruit, but the, the the just the fact that it was so stupid, I thought I I need to cut to have some fun. You know, how often yeah. do I get to do that? So apparently this is Sal. Remind everybody who Sal is. Okay, so this is Sal Cordova. He's an old hand at the evolution and creationism thing. He was uh fairly prominent in the uh intelligent design stuff way back you know 20 years ago right around the time of the dover trial all when you know intelligent design was the was the flavor of the month uh he's a young earth creationist his background if i recall is in various flavors of engineering uh he's got you know legit credentials as far as it goes got you know uh master's degrees i think more than one and um but he has, uh, you know, no background really in evolutionary biology, and he um, makes a mess of this stuff. And uh, I'll tell you one more funny thing about this. I actually had him on my channel just a few weeks ago to talk about this specific argument that he then made this video about. Um, we spent about an hour talking about this. So this is, um, like... I've talked to him about this. Other people have talked to him about this and tried to explain like, Sal, this is not the slam dunk you think it is. Um, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember I, I had a debate with him and Cindy Lincoln. And was was that what I had a partner in that? Was it it was what it was one of two people. It was you or it wasn't me. Yeah, okay. It was it was the other guy then. All right, but um I remember Sal making it evident that he didn't have any idea, honestly, what evolution is. Now you say you you say he had a degree. Uh, yeah, he's got a couple of. Uh, I think it's like engineer masters in like engineering. Oh, okay, yeah. but it's engineering. He does. It's have, yeah, yeah. It's not. I, I, uh, thought, I thought he had like a, that. He had a, a degree that was somehow relevant to evolution. Because no, know how the hell the fuck. I, now, but, to be fair, he would argue that an engineering degree is relevant to evolution. Um, I will say that the uh, 
practitioners in the field of evolution would uh, take issue with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I mean, the argument that we had, uh, I know what evolution is. So I start describing the, de the definition of evolution and asking if he agrees with that. But I don't tell him that it's the definition of evolution. You know, I even, I even go into the definition. I even go into what is the definition of macroevolution without telling him that I'm giving him a definition. I'm just describing, you know, this where you have these uh, you know, levels of genetic variance developed to the point that one population, uh, it, 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 you know, it, it eventually derives that we into two distinguishable subsets, you know, that are, that are you know, morphologically and or genetically distinct. And, he, and so he and to the point that speciation happens. So now they've their descendant subsets that can no longer interbreed with each other. He agreed with all that, and I was like, okay, so you accept evolution then, even macroevolution. And he and he just he stopped stumped because he wants to he wants to argue things that he can't show a correlation. If you want to argue that that, that proteins have a common ancestor regardless what that means show me where that's relevant to evolutionary studies show me because there's, there's got to be a you, you accept you've already admitted you accept actual phylogenies as legitimate so where does it become a problem with your protein thing right i remember telling him that we we, we know of sources even for a bio or, you know uh what is it uh uh abiotic protein so there's mm -hmm. it's it's we now know of at least one process by which proteins can be generated without being from a life form, which was the big circular argument for the longest time that proteins can only come from life and only life makes proteins. And therefore where do the, where do the first proteins come from since life is made of proteins. And I get that, that circular argument, but, but now he brings up something else that I've never heard of. And that's what I wanted to ask you about. He, 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 he wants a common ancestor for what, and this is the way he pronounced it. Topio summarize. Now, I, I'm, I'm not into the microbiology. I don't do the genetics. So I'm going to guess that based on that name, one, that's not how to pronounce it. And two, that's an enzyme. Yes. That's, Correct on both counts. It's not a gene. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a protein. That's, it's an enzyme. It's actually probably topoisomerase. It's pronounced topoisomerase. So it okay. changes the physical conformation of DNA. So he misspelled it as well. I probably. Okay. And the <laughs> so so I had Sal on to talk about this. I was like, Sal, come on, like let's hash this out. Explain this to me because I don't I don't get this argument you're making. Because the argument as he makes it is that you know evolutionists admit that there's no common ancestor for all proteins. You have different protein families that are independent of each other, which is true, right? That is a real thing. It is true that all protein families, right? They don't share common ancestors, not one ancestral protein that evolved into all the other proteins. Everybody yeah. agrees I mean, on we, this. We have, in any given organism, they produce lots of different proteins. So why would there be? And they all have different origins. And that's like, Good because so not a common ancestor. The, the 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 phylogeny that he's working from is completely removed from the the actual phylogeny that that biologists are working from. Yeah, I mean, he's looking at like a specific gene, right, and the evolutionary history of that gene, independent of all the organisms. And he's saying this gene doesn't share common ancestry with this other gene. They had to evolve de novo, independent of each other. And so when I had him on, I tried to like steel man his argument. I tried to make like the strongest form of his argument I could come up with. And I explained it to him and I said, is this your argument? And he said, no, that's not what I'm arguing at all. I'm actually arguing this other thing that is a much less good argument because the argument... Oh. <laughs> no, my argument's not that good. My Akbari argument's actually much worse. <laughs> he didn't say it in those words, but that was that was the 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 implication of this exchange. And so here's... I've had I've had a couple of debates with him. He unwittingly does that. So so here's what <laughs> like what I was able to say. I I grabbed my notes from a couple of weeks ago, and here's what 
I was able to say that he agreed with that this was his argument, said that genes do not all share a common ancestor. So you need to have multiple independent origins for different gene families. Some instances of that are sufficiently improbable that we would call them statistical miracles. Therefore, natural processes cannot explain evolution, right? That's the argument that like we kind of like we're able to that, land on as that's, that's, that's the argument. argument. Okay. So that's that's the argument. As no, you can I'm, imagine, I'm thinking about on the, and we're ignoring for a moment that the the, the topo isomerase that he that's an example that he likes because it's a complex protein. So he's saying this thing is too complex to have evolved, which is a whole he called it a gene. It, yeah, it's the gene that codes and it's an for enzyme. The, yeah, it's so there's the gene that codes for the topo isomerase enzyme. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, is there are there are microbes that uh, you know, it, people will complain that, that evolution is not reproducible in the lab when in fact it is. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of instances where uh, microbes has been shown to have some de novo properties, and I'm mm -hmm. telling you this because you know the audience may not know, and so I, I want them to know. But uh, you know, experiments have been performed to see if in in this prop in this environment can we get this other related microbe to develop the same feature that its sister group did under these circumstances where natural selection indicates that this one would be the the advantageous property, and they did. Mm -hmm. So you would end up with the same mutation producing the same effect. Uh, simply, simply by you know natural selection means by you know large populations where you know that this one's going to confer a definite advantage, and when eventually it happens, okay, it did. Um, but those two now are, well, I guess in his argument we would call them polyphyletic. It's it because yeah, two right, related organisms ended right, up having independent. The same yeah, you have the trait arising independently in separate lineages. Yeah, and yeah. the the problem as Sal sees it here is that those events where you originate a new trait, certain traits are too improbable or too complex to appear that way. Therefore, you need some supernatural input in order for it to happen. This is... Does he know what an enzyme looks like? <laughs> or I mean, how this, it works? <laughs> this, so there's a couple problems here. The first problem is that this is all um, just like kind of feeling, right? It's how improbable is improbable? Well, we can't quantify it. Would you like to try to quantify it? No, I'm not going to quantify it. I asked him several times, can you quantify the threshold? Where's the line? And the answer is no. I can't quantify yeah, I, the threshold. It's just what I asked too, him to show me that same thing. Yeah. So here's, here's a phylogeny. We could, we could pick a phylogeny. Just pick a lineage, right? Yeah. We'll look at the phylogeny of any lineage you like. You show me where this problem of common ancestral proteins becomes relevant. Right. And he, he, he couldn't begin to do that. Yeah. And so if you have, if you have uh, uh, any, let, let's say animal, just to keep it easy, um, and we, we know that if you, if you, produce any number of mutations in in whatever codons, then then they're going to produce a different protein simply by chemistry. Mm -hmm. And so when a mutation happens, a missense mutation, where, where yeah, that, that'll do, it, 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 missense mutation happens, and then it starts producing a different protein. Well, then that, that different protein needed to have a common ancestor? With what? It doesn't. It, in real life, it doesn't. It can. You can get new proteins. How can he be? Where people have different. you have explained this to him? Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We. I mean, I. I went through papers. You can go through papers. There are like in fish, for example. There's these uh, de novo genes that are antifreeze proteins. They're fish that live in the Arctic Ocean, and mm -hmm. it's even that it's in one gene or one protein. You know, it you know mutates and then it becomes a different thing. It's a region of the genome that didn't make a protein before mutates and now it makes a protein that has a new function that is yeah. a thing we have observed happening like this is a thing that we can we can show and to be fair to sal's argument he says okay that can happen some of the time but some of the proteins that are out there like his favorite example topo isomerase are too complex for that to have happened for them why 
Great question. I asked a bunch of times. There is no quantification to that statement. There's no like empirical basis for it. It's an enzyme that's pretty much determined by the by. It, it, uh, let me see if I can um, put this in terms that the, the laity will understand. Try to imagine you picked up a dust bunny or a hairball on your on your carpet, whatever shape that it's taken. Uh, an enzyme can take a particular shape that will be functional just because it's got that shape. Mm -hmm. well, that that's really oversimplifying it, but I think that works, right? I mean, that's yeah, and it's what we know is that there are multiple shapes that will accomplish the same thing, right? Yeah. It's not just you need this one specific DNA sequence to do this one specific function. We know any, any actual biologist in the chat is probably going nuts that I just <laughs> used that analogy, but <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You just it, you could use yeah. It's just proteins and enzymes. The way they interact is just this shape has to be compatible with that shape, right? Yeah. There's lots of ways to achieve that compatible shape. So, and this is a thing like there's a famous paper by an intelligent design guy. From and, it, and if you look, if you look under my, you know, if, uh, illustrations will sometimes make things look more organized than they really are. But if you, if you're yeah. looking at a microphotograph or whatever, that's a hairball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all these, all these interactions are very messy. There's this famous paper from 2004 where this intelligent design guy said the probability of getting this specific protein fold is, you know, one out of 10 to the blah, 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 blah power. Right. And yeah. therefore it couldn't have evolved as too improbable. What he's ignoring is there's dozens of ways to accomplish that same function. There's lots of protein folds that do that same thing, that make the right shape. And like, this is not just like me talking out of my butt. We have examples of this that we have witnessed evolving. And one of my go-to examples for this is HIV, because HIV is a new virus. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, only jumped into humans about a century ago. So all of the evolution that's happened at HIV has happened within the last century. There's, wow. a, there's a part of the human immune system that's different from how it works in chimps to the point where the proteins that kind of defeat the chimp version of that system don't work against the human version. Two yeah. different types of HIV have evolved two different ways of overcoming that defensive measure in humans since it jumped into humanity about a century ago. Two completely different well, ones. Really, I, don't, I don't mean to be pedantic, but I, I would have put that at like 60 years. Uh, it's like 1930, give or take. Oh, is it? Oh, much older. Yeah, than so it, it hung out in the background and spread really slowly for decades. And it didn't, you know, it was kind of mid-70s when it started ramping up. And then 81 was the official, you know, start of the pandemic. Yeah, if I could but only was, go back in time and say, you know, you're really going to impede my sexual activities in the 80s if you don't curb this right now. But yeah, it was about 1930. So almost, yeah. a, give or take, you know, give or take 10 years. So about a century of evolution. And like one of them is really brute force. It's just a bunch of negative charges that accomplish it. And the other one is really precise. It's like a very specific set of amino acids in the protein structure. And if you change any one of them, it doesn't work, right? It's two different ways of solving the same problem. It's like, it's not hard to evolve this stuff. Uh, do we have anything more to say about topoisomerase or shall we move on to zinc finger so i think just kind of big picture not just with topo isomerase but with all this stuff is like sal's argument here he says it's not an irreducible complexity argument you've probably heard of this concept of irreducible complexity but where... did he not also in the same sentence say that it was too complex to have yeah. evolved yes but he doesn't like the phrase irreducible complexity even though he essentially makes that type of argument he doesn't like the phrase evolution like, either, but he well, makes that argument as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the idea, the idea with this is like, you have a system, you know, you need all these parts. If you remove a part, it doesn't work. Therefore it had to evolve all at once. And he uses phrases to talk about how hard it is to evolve these things. Like critical things need to be there simultaneously. And talking about the parts of a system, if you evolve one, you have to simultaneously evolve the other. He's making an irreducible complexity argument but we've directly witnessed the evolution of irreducibly complex structures. So like that doesn't help. It's not a valid anti-evolution argument. Well, it never help was. me out with this at least. Uh, you're saying that the topo isomerase and zinc finger are the same explanation. Yes. Uh, I mean, ultimately, yes. Ultimately, all of these things are the same explanation. Is. 
Sorry, say that again. I don't know what zinc finger is. is oh, that yeah. You, is uh, that when you stick your finger inside the, the pop top of the old can? The um, uh, zinc finger protein, it's a it's a specific motif. It's a specific shape in a in a protein that grabs onto a DNA molecule. So it's called okay. a zinc finger because it's got like this 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 bit that sticks into the groove of the double helix. And it often involves a zinc ion. Okay. So called a so zinc something finger. about as complex as Velcro. And yeah, well, that's actually a really good analogy because the whole point is that the DNA molecule up and down that double helix, it has regions that are polar. So you've got partial positive and partial negative charges. And in order to stick to it, you just need basically the right pattern of the opposite charges. And like we know that there's dozens of ways of making these zinc finger folds. It's not like it's this, you know, super complicated, super isolated thing that if you change one little piece of it, it doesn't work. There's lots of ways to accomplish that same function. Okay. So why would it be hard to evolve? If there's dozens of ways to do it, why would we think it would be hard to evolve? So and there, and more importantly, to sell. There's no indication that that a common ancestor would even be relevant, much less necessary. It, I'd even go further and say that if there was a common ancestor for evol for all proteins, that would be a problem for evolution. Yeah, evolution <laughs> works because de novo genes are a thing that can evolve. Right, we can get new genes where there previously weren't. That's one of the engines of evolution. If that wasn't a thing, that would be a problem, Sal. And, and let's not forget that neither of these things, the topoisomerase uh, zinc finger, nor proteins, none of them are genes. And he's calling them genes. Yeah, we're conflating, you know, the protein product of the gene with the DNA sequence that's the actual gene, right? There's a little bit of conflation of those two things yeah. in this conversation. Yes. Okay. And when we're talking about, you know, evolving a new protein, what we're really dealing with is getting a novel DNA sequence. That's what we need, a novel sequence that can be transcribed to RNA and then translated to a polypeptide. So I don't I don't see the need to labor this much further. I want to thank you for, for, for coming on to explain these because I'd never heard of either of these before. And I had no idea but what, who, who we were talking about, uh -huh. nor, nor what the argument is. But it occurs to me that if you're an engineer and uh, you want to come up with an argument that's going to overturn the, the best supported theory in all of science. And it, it happens to concern biology, which is not your field. And every biologist who hears that argument laughs at you. All of them for multiple reasons, each maybe don't make that argument. <laughs> maybe don't make the argument or at the very least quantify it have numbers that we can test maybe sal Show bring me where it's relevant bring numbers yep <laughs> dr daniel stern cardinal thank you so much for that i just need to have a little bit of fun today thanks for having me on happy to do it <laughs>